for introductions. It is now time for member statements. The member from the P of Carlton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Each day we have a few minutes uh, dedicated to this assembly uh, for each of our caucuses to talk about important people in their constituencies. I actually think it is a shining example of how we can bring the stories of incredible people from our constituencies into the public record of Ontario. And uh, that is what I want to do today with Mr. Raymond Desjardins from the Barhaven Legion. Ray is going to turn 75 years old on Saturday, and he has been a great friend to me and to many others across the community as he has championed this, the, uh, the beginning, the inception of the Barhaven Legion, uh, Canada's, uh, mo one of Canada's most successful legions that just began uh, its, its um, institutional history in Nepean just 10 years ago. Ray is the padre of our legion, and he has presided over many difficult passings and circumstances in our community, always fighting for the veterans who served our community, but going one step further by actually uh, being a, a very important supporter of the Pearly Rideau Veterans Centre and ensuring that all of those from our community in Nepean and Carleton are treated with dignity and respect. He has been uh, part of food and toy drives. He has been part of the annual Christmas stocking uh, filling at the, at the Pearly Rideau. And it is for all of these wonderful contributions that he was awarded the, the Order of Ottawa by the City of Ottawa, and he is a Knight Commander of the Order of St. George. On behalf of all of his friends in Nepean and Carleton, but more importantly to all of those people that Ray has volunteered for and has given so much to, I want to say happy birthday to you on your very special day. Thank you. Thank you. For the member, please, the member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with a heavy heart that I rise today to talk about the loss of an icon in my riding, Mr. Don Eade. Don was a guy in Chippewa who was involved in everything and knew everyone. He and his wife, Carol, volunteered with countless organizations, including the Willoughby Historic Society, the Village of Chippewa Citizens Committee, the Niagara Falls Battle of Chippewa, and so many, many more. Don and his wife, Carol, were recently inducted into the Niagara Falls Arts and Culture Hall of Fame. Whether you knew him from his days as a champion pigeon racer or friends he had coffee with every morning in the Chippewa Tim Hortons, or a person who came to see his collection of historic items from the village of Chippewa, or someone who got a Chippewa green card from him, everyone loved Don. They loved him so much that they even called him Mr. Chippewa. And from the village of Chippewa, or someone who got a Chippewa green card from him, everyone loved Don. They loved him so much that he called him Mr. Chippewa, a name he proudly put on his license plate to go with the Chippewa Ontario winter car sticker, window car sticker. Today would have been Don's 79th uh, birthday to be exact, and on this day I'm sure that wherever he is, he knows that his friends his family and his community will miss him dearly. I met Don during my first campaign I ever ran, and he stood by me every campaign after. I can honestly say that without Don's support and his incredible friendship, I wouldn't be standing here today to give this statement. For over 15 years, Don has been my dedicated and loyal friend, and I know I will never stop missing him. I want to send my condolences to Don's family's wife, Carol, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, his daughters Darlene, Rebecca, and his grandchildren Marshall, Sarah, and Jack, and to everyone else who cannot begin to imagine what Chippewa and Niagara will be without Don Eade. So long, Mr. Chippewa, and thank you for being my friend. Thank you. The member, Sanders, the member from Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about the third annual Model Parliament, a three day educational program designed for grades 10 to 12 students who are interested in current events and provincial issues. 
This unique educational experience brings 107 students from across Ontario, representing each of the province ridings in Toronto. The model of Parliament is an excellent forum for our youth to gain a stronger insight and knowledge of the province's uh, parliamentary <coughs> practices and traditions while participating in an authentic experience that will teach them the value and importance of a democratic process. Tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, the participant of the model of Parliament will be doing mock debate in the, this legislative chamber. And I look forward to attending this debate as I know it will be lively and engaging. Last night, I had an opportunity to meet many of the student participants attending the 2016 Model Parliament, including my students, Anna Wang, a grade 11 student at Dr. Norman Bethune Collegiate. She's from the great writer of Scarborough Asian Corps, a highly respected young activist recognized by her peers and worked very hard on social and global issues. Mr. Speaker, I know the 2016 students a model parliament will forge new friendships, acquire new appreciation about how decisions are being made here in this legislature, and become active citizens. And I want to thank all the staff at the legislature for organizing the third annual model parliament. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member for Kitchener Conestoga. Yes, well, thank you, Speaker. Last night I had the pleasure to attend the Life Sciences Ontario annual uh, awards gala. Life Sciences Ontario is a member-driven organization that represents and promotes the province's vibrant and diverse life sciences sector. Here are highlights of some of the awards presented last night. A Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Murray McLaughlin, the Executive Director of Bioindustrial Innovation Canada. This award recognized his leadership in commercializing biotechnologies and growing innovative-based uh, companies. The LSO Volunteer Award was presented to Jason Lachlan, who is a long-standing member of the LSO Board and whose advocacy and enthusiasm for the life sciences emanates in his role on many committees and initiatives for LSO. And finally, the Life Science Leadership Award was given to David Allen, a board member of Formation Bio Biologics. I met David in my office back in December on the LSO Lobby Day, saying that David is passionate about furthering the life sciences industry is merely an understatement. His Zealous, or he zealously champions the need for public policy to foster and promote the same high tolerance for capital investment in life sciences, which Canadian investors practice in other industries. David advocates for the adjustment of fiscal obstacles to life sciences capital, and I must stress that I agree with David on this point. There is more to be done in the life sciences sector in Ontario, and as the critic for research and innovation, it is my goal to do that that I can advocate and promote the needs of organizations such as LSO. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it isn't too often that we find a subject on which both Labour and management agree, where union and non-union workers are on the same page. Yet with the re release of the Dean Review on the Ontario College of Trades, there appears to, appears to be a strong collective voice for many in the construction industry. While the Dean Review contains many positive elements, there is concern that the government is moving too quickly on some of the recommendations, recommendations that could have profound impact on the construction industry in our province. I will remind members that when the college was set up, the objective was to allow the construction industry to regulate itself through an independent self-financing body. Now, with some of the recommendations in the Dean Review, it appears that the government is changing the original basis for the college. Earlier this week, I met with members of the Progressive Certified Trades Coalition who are holding meetings to explain the impact on the Dean Review on health and safety, apprenticeships, and public safety. I hope all members have an opportunity to chat with them, learn more about these important issues, and ensure that the government holds detailed and inclusive consultations for implementing the recommendations of the Dean Review. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I want to give tribute to Mr. Toronto, Al Green. Al Green basically built this city. He built over uh, 100,000 suburban uh, homes, apartments. He built commercial units. Where you see concentration near the subways on uh, Davisville and Young, down on uh, Bloor and Sherburne. All over the city, Al Green had a vision of people living near public transit. So where the subway went, Al built. Al started on Major Street, just a bit west of here. Him and his father, Lippa, and his brother, Harold, they started cleaning chimneys, sweeping chimneys. Then they started repairing chimneys. Then they started building houses. Then they started to build this city, Al Green. And Al Green 
not only built the city, but he built the arts in the city. He gave millions away in philanthropy to the arts, to sculpture. He also uh, created the Al Green Resource Centre for uh, adults with uh, learning challenges. Mr. Al Green also created the Al Green Theatre, the Al Green Gallery, the Lipper Green Centre for Jewish Community Services. Al Green was everywhere, and everywhere in this city you will see a city that Al Green built. So when you look at Toronto, you're really looking at Al Green's dream. Going to miss you, Al. You did so much to build this great city, and we will always remember the building that you did with your own bare hands. Long live Al Green. Thank you. Member Seekers, the member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I'm pleased to say today that what's uniting us amongst all parties today is our, our reflections on remarkable citizens. And, I, and I'm going to be following suit because earlier this year, Speaker, I was honoured to welcome to the Teeswater Town Hall three, re, 13 remarkable volunteers from across Huron, Bruce, who have worked selflessly to make their communities more vibrant. The evening was one of recognition and celebration, and as one reporter for the Walkerton Herald Times said, this was, without any understatement, one of the most inspiring events I've ever attended. The remarkable people that were recognized that evening have been truly quiet champions for their communities, just getting the job done, and honestly an inspiration to their many neighbours, friends and family members that were there in attendance that evening. Whether it had been working for a new community soccer pitch, serving children nutritious food at school, or ensuring people living with disabilities are immersed in our communities, these remarkable Huron Bruce citizens have dedicated their time and energy to making their communities better for those around them. And that is why today I say thank you and congratulations to Jeff Roberts of Walkerton, Bob Kellington of Brussels, Kathy Pennington of Kincardine, Vicki Colbert of Godrich. Don Farrell of Ripley, Dr. Chandra Tepethi from Kincardine, Heather Frook of Brockton, James Rice of Teverden, Roger Lewington of Bayfield, Jean Culleton of Teeswater, Jenny Rowe of Exeter, Clarence Kiefer of Walkerton, and Diane Lieber of Godreach, formerly South Bruce. Thank you for all you've done for your communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. Uh, the, the member from further member statements. The member from you have to do it after. The member from Durham. <laughs> Thank you, Speaker. I am glad to rise today to welcome the first Syrian refugee family to Skugag. They arrived last week on their trip from Jordan to Montreal and then to Skugag with the help of the Port Perry Refugee Support Group. Of course, they happened to arrive on the coldest day of the year so far. But I know that the residents of Skugag generously came forward with mittens and winter gear for them. I want to acknowledge the residents of Durham for their kindness and welcoming in welcoming this family and preparing to welcome and they're preparing to welcome several more. I know the residents of Durham value a diverse and inclusive community and are eager to offer their hospitality and to share our vibrant community with those who need our help most. Thank you to the to the constituents of Durham and to the Port Perry Refugee Support Group. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On January 17th, I was pleased to join over 100 residents of Burlington in a five-kilometer walk to support the resettlement of a Syrian refugee family in our community. This walk was organized by Olivia Walker Edwards, a grade nine student from Burlington's Blythe Academy. What started out as a school assignment turned into an event that brought out the best in our neighbors and united our community. Working in partnership with the Burlington Downtown Refugee Alliance, a coalition spearheaded by St. Luke's Anglican Church and made up of faith-based groups, community organizations, city hall staff, local businesses and Burlington residents, Olivia helped to raise over $5,000 to support a privately sponsored Syrian family. Olivia's efforts to make this walk happen are proof that one person, no matter what their age, can make a difference in the lives of others. From speaking to young people in our city, including those on my Youth Advisory Committee, I know that these young people have a great deal of empathy for the children who are building a new life here in Canada, and Olivia embodies this empathy. When I asked her why she chose to do this walk, here's what she said. 
I organize this walk because we have all been touched by the images we have seen of the children and families fleeing Syria. I wanted to do something to help and to make a difference. Since the walk, I have learned that the family we are expecting is very similar to my own, a family of six with two boys and two girls, and it makes the walk even more meaningful to me. I look forward to meeting them, she continued, and to sharing the success of the walk with them. I hope this will make them feel welcome and supported by their new home. I'd like to congratulate Olivia and thank her and all the students at Blythe Academy, as well as the Burlington Refugee Alliance, not only for this great event, but for their continued efforts to resettle Syrian families in our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.